Thank you for listening to Scale Your Sales podcast. Periodically, I like to talk to you directly and discuss what's on my mind or answer some questions my customers ask me. Now, it's predicted that the UK is going to go into a deep economic recession. And I know from my family and colleagues that the USA is the same, as is much of the world. So the question I've been asked recently is, how can salespeople continue to grow their sales in an increasingly difficult economy where customers are cutting budgets and delaying decisions? For those that do not know me, I am Janice B. Gordon, the customer growth expert listed in the top 50 global thought leaders and influencers on customer experience and one of 150 B2B thought leaders you should follow and LinkedIn sales 15 innovative sales influencers to follow in 2021. Now, as a consultant, international speaker, educator and facilitator, an author of Business Evolution Creating Growth in a Rapidly Changing World, and co-author of Heels to Deals, How Women Are Dominating B2B Sales, I founded Scale Your Sales podcast and framework that reimagines revenue growth through customer excellence and sales. Let me give you some background and context before I answer the question on growing sales in a difficult economy. I'll give you three tips and three points. Scale Your Sales helps organizations to close the gap to growing key customers, accelerating sales results, and increasing value to customer outcomes, giving companies the competitive advantage. Starting with scale, evaluation analysis of your people, processes, and customer growth strategies. Now, I've been exposed to a bank of 25 years of verified and certified research on which best practice of sales, we know what this looks like. Now, using this as a filter to better target what will make the biggest impact on performance for sales leaders, the managers and the sales reps. I created scale evaluation analysis out of this. Because the fact is, the average of 50% of sales reps do not achieve quota. And this has been the case for decades. So with all of the sales training given and the bad coaching, the industry relies on the top 25% of performers pulling everyone else through and say 25% of the turnover of poor sales reps annually. Now, this is dependent on what industry you're in, but there's a lot of ways in the current process. So my view is that this is an expensive business model and it's the customer that pays the price. Gartner says that 50% of buying journeys end in no decision. Now, we know that sellers are not in charge of the sales process. It's buyers. Gartner also says that 77% of B2B buyers state that the last purchase experience was complex and didn't match up to the buyer's expectation. Now, if we're not meeting the buyer's expectations of what the purchase should be, then how can you help to satisfy their requirements and increase your sales revenue? LinkedIn's 2022 state of sales report that 60% of sellers say that they always put buyers first, but only 24% of buyers agree. Now, this misalignment in the perspective of what buyers want and what sellers deliver. In the last 15 years, we have survived the global economic crisis and a global pandemic. Now we're looking at a global economic recession. The point is, if you adapt, you survive. In a downturn economy, sales organization must make their revenue generating opportunity more effective and take out the waste. 
hence me covering this at the beginning. Stop recruiting expecting a percentage of the recruits to leave. Instead, develop better recruitment practices that attract a diversity of people. First, a diverse team performs better. Second, I help organisations to implement a questionnaire to identify potential candidates. And this is used before the biased interview process that only recruits more of the same, more like me or the manager. Stop generic training. Most of the information is forgotten within the first month. First, I identify the individual level of what the sales rep needs or lacks to become a top performer. I help companies to implement this questionnaire on their sales team, which will help to identify the performance gap and for those in the wrong job, so that we'll never become high performers if you're not using their strengths. The results helps the manager to create individual performance plans to perform better. Now you have a productive sales team. They're in the right place with the right complement of capabilities. You need to now to align what you can do best and for your most valued customers. What will deliver an impact to them? Third is stop being all things to all customers. Stop attracting the new logos and leaking out the established contracts or not growing what you have already in place, your existing relationships. The scale of yourself framework is formed of three elements, retention, productivity, and attraction. So the first point is if you want to retain what's great, understand the experience your customer values the most, the value transfer and your competitive advantages for your most valued customer's perspective. In a downturn economy, if you know what customers value, you know what not to cut. The back office, the sales support, this is best to invest in. At the beginning of the pandemic, for example, banks and institutions that people and businesses relied upon received many complaints of no or poor service, slowness to respond and adapt. Nine months in, we were getting answer phone services saying due to the pandemic, nine months in. These companies failed their customers. Do not be one of them. Prepare yourself for this recession that's coming. I spoke at Virtualize Conference in June 20, presenting that now is the time to put your customers first. Now, it's no different then as it is now. There were so many great examples of companies doing this, and they excelled in the pandemic. When I worked for customer experience consultancies, I learned that customers are your best innovators and creators. And this remained my mantra throughout my sales journey. So the second point is the scale your sales framework element of productivity is to focus on your most productive asset of your business. This is your key customers and accounts. Segment the best from the rest and grow through these most valued customers. In a downturn, understanding the 20% that create the 80% of your revenue, say, they must become your focus. What keeps them and what will grow them? This is the opportunity to get close to them and support them in their challenges to achieve their business goals. So the third point is scale your sales framework attraction. This is to attract, engage, educate and elevate the relationships into solid business partnerships that have a lifetime value built in to the trusted relationship. The more you can remain in step with your most valued customers in a downturn and understand which markets and products have the highest potential for growth, this will dictate your go-to-market strategy, your strategic decision-making and targeted investments. Now, I always say to the companies that I work with, you must know the impact of every decision you make and what it has on your most valued customer. If you have not quantified and qualified this, you should not be making the decision.
And this is especially true in a downturn. The mistakes company make is to contract in and cost cut in a recession without thinking of the end users and customers. Once your best customers receive poor service, support and bad experience, they're gone. And along with your share of revenue, all strategic decisions must be based upon known impact on your most valued customer. Excellent customer experience drives exceptional revenue results. At Scale Yourselves, we start with scale evaluation. This analysis is of your people, your processes, and your customer growth strategies. If you'd like to talk to me about how your sales organization can better scale your sales, or if you want to find out more about scale, the evaluation analysis of your people, processes, and customer growth strategies, go to scaleyourselves.co.uk. Or if you'd like to book me to speak to your sellers, janicebgordon.com. Or contact me on LinkedIn, Janice B. Gordon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. There'll be more experts to listen to in the forthcoming episode.